padre. Sí. Same old crap, gang, all right? The same old crap. A problem that we haven't been able to solve. The politicians tell us they're going to do it. They haven't done squat. In 1986, there were over 70,000 arrests in New York City for drugs, all right? That's enough people to fill Yankee Stadium, not to mention the tidal wave of violence and deaths of countless men and women and children. Yet tonight, there are those among us who will call for the legalization of the really hard crap. Legalization, my ass. Hell no. Get rid of the drugs. Drug dealers. Drug sympathizers. Burn the bastards. Right down to brass tacks here, gang. They might as well not screw around tonight. It ain't gonna be funny by the time we get through. No prisoners tonight, all right? Let me start off at home base. An old antagonist of mine, John Flynn. How are you, John? Very well, thank you. Good to see you, pal. I hope you're not by the end of the evening. <laughs> at the Loudmouth, uh, Joe Pariso. Joe, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? All right, sir. Joe is uh, with the Essex County Sheriff's Office. 28 years a cop. 24 is a narco, into education, works with kids, is a graduate of the FBI School on Narcotics, against the legalization of any drugs. Now, on the other hand, John Smith has all, Flynn, rather, has all the stats, and he feels we should legalize it, save money and reduce crime. Exactly. All right. Okay. okay. Uh, why? Before you even start, <clears throat> before you even start the fight, you have three strikes against you. Don't give me that First, crap. Don't give me that This is a free crap. country. Huh? If I walk in with a bottle of arsenic and it's I set it on a table... It's a free country, then, if I walk in with a gun no. and blow no. your brain. if I walk in with a bottle of arsenic, and I say to any of you, I say, I say, this is poison. Don't use it. This is poison. Don't use it. Don't use it. And I walk out of the room, and you're an adult, and you pick it up and you use it. I'm sorry, this is a free country, and there's no way to blame anybody except yourself. So you're saying, so you're saying, you're saying that the country should have no responsibility for protecting their citizens, even yes, like you. Yes, they should have a responsibility, especially me. Especially me should be protected. Joe. Secondly, Joe. Joe, you've been a peace officer for 28 years, involved in alcohol and narcotics for the last 24. You kind of detect a little bit of a crackpot here, huh? I uh. When I came here tonight, I kind of figured that we were going to have an intelligent discussion about uh, legalizing or not legalizing drugs. And we start talking about putting a bottle of arsenic on the floor, uh, I, I kind of leaves me. You know, you're, you're, you're talking about adults. What about the kids? What about the major health problem we have right now with the legal drugs we have on the street? What about the fact that, that, that we have at least 350,000 kids in the state of New Jersey right now that are in trouble with drugs? What about that fact? Let me tell if you. If you legalize about. drugs, if you legalize drugs, what you're going to do is increase that usage because with availability of drugs comes increased usage. And who are you going to have put the legal drug on the street, John? Who's going to do that? Big companies? That's wonderful. The next time we Your watch a ball problem. game, when a guy hits a home run, he can hit a crack pipe and fly over the wall. Your biggest problem. <laughs> Your biggest problem is that the reason they're legal, the reason they've been legalized, the reason that booze is legal is because you couldn't stop it from coming into the country and you couldn't stop it from being distributed. And been able to stop secondly, rape either. Shall we legalize secondly, rape? Secondly, you have a big country here. 309 million people go across the border every year. You got 50,000 vessels coming in and out. You have thousands of illegal people coming across. You have thousands of ships. You have thousands of airplanes. You have 13 million tons of containerized goods coming in. You're not going to stop it coming in. When you come in, you, know how you're gonna you got it. 250 million people 
who say, I may want to use this. They don't say they want to use it. They say, I may want to use it. I may want to use it. And you're going to say, we're going to stop you. The hell you are. You know how we're going to stop you? You know how we're going to stop him, Joe? John. We're gonna st I'm talking to Joe oh, out there, sorry. right? <laughs> you, know how we're gonna you know how we're gonna stop them? We're gonna stop them by giving them a mandatory 40 years in jail for those who bring it in, all right? For those <laughs> sympathizers who think it should come in, and for the big drug dealers, burn them. Burn them. You're not gonna do it. It's a stupid idea. We it's a would stupid do idea. You're not gonna do it. Too good an idea? You're Why talk it. about You're stupid ideas? You're going to do what these people say to do it. They're damn tired of their government telling them what they're going to do and how not doing people, anything. How many people die? Let me say something. How many something. people die from drugs, ingesting drugs? 3,600 a year. How many die from cigarettes? 350,000. How many die from alcohol? 100,000. You have 3,600 people as a base of people dying how because they're ingesting drugs. First how, all, many how, many how many died from law? You're 150. How many died from illegal? How many died from cigarettes? Many more. Many more. How many died from cigarettes? 350,000. <laughs> Great. 351,000. Should we take them away from you? Should we take them away from you? Pardon me? Should we ban tobacco? Oh, I wish the hell you would. Would you like us to ban wish tobacco? Wish the hell you would. I smoke Why don't you go after that? Things. you got 350,000 people dying. Why don't you go after that? Can you prove the 350,000 died from tobacco? I'm a biophysicist, biophysicist You're a biophysicist, man. I'm a lot you want to, to legalize, it. you want to legalize things Absolutely. like crack and cocaine. Absolutely. Absolutely. First of all, first of all, you know if you're a bio... I'm sure you're a biochemist if you say you are. Biophysicist, whatever you are, yes. you also know that in order to go after uh, cigarettes and alcohol, it's ridiculous because you're never yeah. going to get them taken off of the market because there's too damn much of a lobby against it. Right. You also know, I hope you know, that we should deal with drugs at their place in society right now. We're trying to do that with cigarettes and alcohol. If you legalize the other drugs, you're only going to create a larger market, and it's going to be, and it's going to be publicized greatly, and people are going to make a lot of dough on it. And after you the have it legalized, some money after you change. legalize it, Ten years later, when you have a much, a much larger major health problem in this country, you'll never get them taken off the market either. You want to do something about the stuff coming into this country? You've got to use the Army, the Navy, the Marine uh, Corps. The other thing you've got to do is you when you catch out, these people... Excuse me. Will you excuse me one it second. Out. Nonsense. What you've got That's to do... Nonsense. Wait until you get up to the zipper, You're not nonsense. You're not nonsense. You're not nonsense. You're not nonsense. Let me tell you what you got to do with these people that bring it in here. You got to do to them what they do to our people that go to their country and get locked up. That's what you got to do to them when they bring drugs Let's into this country. Let's do what they do in Malaysia. Let's do what they do in Malaysia. Let's kill. Let's execute everybody associated with drugs in this country. That's they not a bad they idea. execute them. It's not a bad idea. Let's start with the 840,000. 840,000 what? Let's kill them all. 840,000 what? Let me tell you something. What, John? Don't throw out a figure and not tell us what the 840,000 of what? These were drug-related arrests in 1986. I'd like to ask you another thing. Of the 840,000 drug arrests in 1986, I'd like to know how many of those people have been arrested six times because when they go in front of a judge, they walk out on a $150 bail. When they should stack them, when they should stack them five on top of each other. Jails are not place, are not nice places, and they never will be nice places as long as they keep putting crooks in them. Are you a millionaire? Do you want to set up your own jail, or do you want the, all of us to set up all these jails? I think that no, we don't have the jails. Away. No, we, we want to pay jail. all the medical bills for the junkies. All right? You think it's you worth to put them in jail? You got 3,600 of them dying every year. You got 250 Who million people in there. The we'll be right back. some new guests who are joining us in this segment at uh, Loudmouth Number 2, Iman uh, Siraj Wahaj. Good evening, Iman. How are you, sir? At home base with us is, uh, is a gentleman by the name of, uh, I believe you call yourself Otto Van Ruggen? Von, Von Ruggen. Von Ruggen. Okay, Von Ruggen. Von what? Helsing tonight. Von Helsing tonight. Yes, Very I've come good. to play uh, Dracula. Very good. 
Let me talk to you, Otto Baby. He wrote a letter to one of our producers, all right, saying that drugs are not the problem, that the really the problem is the laws. Now, uh, what the hell is it? Well, for one thing, uh, isn't it strange how the government and organized crime share the same interest in keeping drugs illegal? I mean, this fact alone should lead us to question the core of our drug policy in this country. I mean, any time drugs are maintained as being illegal and there's a profit to be made, <coughs> remember prohibition, there are always going to be violent crime related to drugs. Okay? All right. I, I'm not going to disagree with you at all. That makes very good sense. Also, try and remember that uh, alcohol no longer is illegal. But 29% of the alcohol on shelves and bars in this country is still rucked up. All right. Okay. So what would you do tomorrow if suddenly tobacco became illegal and all, the only source was black market and you had to pay $100 a pack? How many nicotine addicts would be arming themselves with guns out there to procure their pleasure and wreaking violence on their fellow citizens? See, I think, you, I think you're counting the American people as totally an addictive society. There's totally a society that's without responsibility. Uh, I'm addicted to cigarettes myself. I can promise you, baby. If they were outlawed, I would be off them fast as hell. I'd yeah, love that's you. I'd love it. That's I you. think I think don't I am the average guy. I don't think I am any smarter yeah, or any dumber. Is more addictive than heroin. This is uh, uh, <laughs> that's right. That's I right. know. That's I know. Right. I know a very it's harder few, to give up I know a very few heroin. people who would commit a murder to get a cigarette. That's, that's all relative to the law. You change the law, and then we'll see how many nicotine addicts there are out there. Oh, you see the nicotine addicts, but they're not going to go out and kill for it. They're not going to go out and rob because for it. Because they're not put in that position where they cannot obtain it. No, if you wrong. make it that, illegal... Now, Otto, you know you're making that a little bit no. simplistic, all right? And all of us are smart enough to know that. Joe, let, let me go back to you. I mean, no. John. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> why is it you? Why is Joe it you? Flynn was uh, funny, and you yeah. want me to be funny, Nick, Nick, and I'm not seeing it. I'm Otto, backwards or forwards, okay? okay. Why, why is it that you pablum pukers are always uh, down <laughs> when the going gets rough, all right? You back down. What's wrong with tougher laws, more police, and getting rid of drugs? What's the matter with that? I wish it worked. That's How could all. it work? It doesn't work. How could it work, work Joe? It will work. It will work if it's done fairly. Yeah, here's the man who wants to use the military, right? Pardon you want to use the military, right? Yeah, I want to use so the military. So let's say we spend a billion dollars into this country. And by the way, while I'm on the subject, your argument is ridiculous. They're never going to yeah. take cigarettes or alcohol off the market. But let's talk That's about right. alcohol. Big business. The majority of the, of the people in jail today for committing a violent crime were drinking when they committed a violent crime. Right. You want to add more drugs so they can, no, they can commit more violent crimes? You're ridiculous. Use the name drugs. of the game is getting high, my friend. Right. That's yeah. the name of the game. How many violent crimes are committed outside of the illegality of drugs because of drugs? Very, very few. And how many uh, more very, will, very how few. Many will you admit will be committed it? Would you admit when you that? legalize drugs, Will you friend, admit that? You're not going Let me to ask you, will you, you admit it? Your, your violent crimes related to drugs are because drugs are illegal. Bull that, baloney. That, you're that's trying right. to drugs are because people get whacked out of their oh, minds. Well, that's why you're violent. trying you to suppress any, a natural human instinct. I when kids you, are you young... Don't know what you're talking about. You, you haven't got the first idea of what you're talking about. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Here is the guru, all right, of legalizing cocaine, crack, and all that stuff. An example. Young lady in Washington, D.C., all right? Junior at Mount Vernon College. Wanted to try crack. So she's living with her girlfriend. Oh, yeah. She takes a trip up to a crack den, all right, in Washington, D.C. So she sold her soul. Right. We know this. You know the story. Yeah, huh? I heard it. You heard the story. Right. So you know that it happened. Yeah. All right, let me tell you what she did. Well, he doesn't she care about it either. She had 120 well, bucks on her. Went up to the crack stories. house. Went up to the crack house. Spent her 120 bucks, and she was with a friend of mine, all right? His mind was blown when he saw her go through the 20, 120, borrowed 100 from him, went through that, excused herself, went home, picked up her girlfriend's car, sold it to the crack dealer for 500 bucks, smoked that, all right, then screwed every guy in the den, all right, and went home. Crack See? really a neat people drug, who baby. How many people oh, neat drug. How many... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Deaths? You just said how many people die from injecting crack? Ingesting. You don't even know what you're talking ingesting. about. Ingesting. Ingesting. 
Very few. Suggesting how many died? Yeah, you're talking about guys who better go out and buy it. What are you talking about? You know who dies? You know who dies? The kids in the ghetto die. You know why they die? Kids in the suburbs die too. I'm telling you why they die. Where you live? I'm sure. Very few. Very few die. The kids who are dying, and these are facts, okay, are Hispanics and blacks are dying from drugs, not because the ingestion of drugs kills them or because they go out and kill somebody because they ingested drugs. They die because drugs are illegal and there is an illegal criminality, and that's why they die. Let me tell you something about somebody that sells a drug and kills somebody. I mean, he really uses his brain. I mean, let's get back. Let's get back to talking about the military. You talk yeah, about I'd like my to get tax back dollars. To talk about yeah. the military. Let's talk about your tax dollars, dollars right, right now. Are going for public health in Japan and okay. over in Germany? What your tax dollars are going for, my friend? You, let's say you're successful and you spend a billion dollars to seal the borders. This is what you all want to do. You want to seal the borders you know against foreign sources. You're not talking that's about sealing the borders. That's ridiculous. That's well, talking I'm about talking about borders. crop eradication. That's what you want. Crop eradication, right? That's the way. And once you've sealed, you're sure you safe. You fight in it, pal. Once you've, once you've sealed the foreign sources, you're safe, right? Just like Sigourney Weaver when she I'm jettisons out of the mothership in her little shuttle thinking she she's safe from the aliens. Living living in fantasy right? world, have you ever right? heard have you ever heard of designer drugs? Does any I never hear anybody that's talking about using the mil military world here tonight, talk Bart. about designer drugs. You've been 28 years in Narcan. Have you ever encountered designer drugs? I think drugs? this guy that's just dropped out of Duran Duran. Oh, tell me. Tell me about designer drugs that started out yeah. in California about 15 right. years ago and they were right. called something else. What the hell do you know about okay. drugs 15 years so ago? So they set up clandestine laboratories and you can... Clandestine, you can yeah. Right. You can produce... You can produce... You've got a free dictionary yeah. with that tie. Right. You can produce the world supply of heroin synthetically without any poppies for under $1,000. And you what can set the lab. Heroin okay. for under a thousand dollars? Yeah. Under the world supply. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. For a thousand right. bucks. Well, he's working Give on it right take. now. You know the article like was written in 1982. I only wish they had that bag. All right. Drugs on the street. Is it getting better or worse? It's getting worse. Come on. Uh, welcome our guests back. Iman is still with us, and of course, uh, Mr. Friso, who you have met, joining us at home base, Curtis Sliwa, founder and head of the Guardian Angels. <laughs> Curtis, once again, okay, we've heard from the academic uh, boobs, uh, their solution to a very real problem. Now, you Guardian Angels are on the streets every day. Can you imagine what the streets would be like if you legalized crack and heroin? A heroin. Well, you know, it's always, and I feel like I'm in a time warp, like this is the 60s, and next to me is Timothy Flip Out Leary, Abby, Abby Ziprain Hoffman, Hunter Bazaar Head Thompson. You know, they're perfect examples of what drugs did for us in the 60s. Smoked open hope. Well, now we're in the 80s. And the area that's been most devastated by drugs, all kinds of drugs, is the inner city. You never hear apostles of drugs as black or Hispanic people who've had to live with the death toll as it mounts, who've had to live with their sons and daughters becoming like mutants in Dawn of the Dead, possessed, possessed by a form of genocide that is destroying their community. No, rather, we Americans claim that we're a compassionate people. Let us assume, Mort, that 80% of the people could use all these forms of drugs as a leisure time occupation, that it didn't affect them. He's nodding his head up and down. <laughs> what about the 20% who, because of their addiction to this, they crave it. They got no control of their bowel movements, their physical well, and mental faculties. Like they're, they're laying they out are. in the street. If we as a compassionate people in America would say, I don't need drugs to survive, this is a leisure activity. Wouldn't you and every able, red-blooded American man or woman give up your leisure to save the 20% who've had to succumb and live a life of hell? I would. What about you? But, Curtis, Curtis, the problem, 
There is a problem, and Otto puts his finger on it. The laws aren't dealing with it properly. The laws are causing the problem more than the drug is. But We're putting these people in jail. They're coming out on a $50 bail. They never get back in again. We're not loading, I mean, we're loading the prisons with whores and everything else, but we're not putting the real ones that belong in, in there. But but out of business. Notice the, the people who are advocating legalization, who are making excuses for drug users, they're up in their intellectually ivory towers. Sure. When they have problems with drugs because they have bucks, where do they go? The Betty Ford Clinic, California, Dwight Gooden, Slithers Institute, New York, six-week miracle cure. When you're poor and impoverished, like the people that the Yaman in Bedford Stuyvesant have to go through, there are no treatment programs. There is not enough money. There ain't and no they Betty Ford. Ain't no Betty Ford treatment program. Iman, Iman, <coughs> you're in Bedford Stuyvesant all the time. What do you face? What do you see? What are your people trying to do? On our block on um, in Fulton Street, there were 15 drug houses. Each one of them were, were dealing with uh, $10,000 dollars a day on your block on a block that's hundred and fifty thousand dollars one day over fifty five million dollars a year on one block and we see the devastation and what we did there are serious people out there and we close those crack houses down and the people in this country have to get a new spirit a spirit of fight back and close every crack house in this country I think it's a joke when people talk about legalizing drugs. I think that what we have to do is understand that not only the crime that comes with it, but the destruction of the minds of youngsters who would take drugs. And you legalize drugs and have seven-year-old children come and buy drugs and destroy their future. And we say, no, you're not going to destroy our future you're ever not again. You're going to legalize it for children. You're going to have uh, extra oh, penalties. Yeah. Extra penalties against alcohol it. from seven years right. old. Right. And, and how we did it. Seven year old. How we did it. Alcohol. Alcohol. How we did it. How we did it. We had a determination, like the drug dealers can come in our neighborhood and sell drugs. They can shoot us. They can kill us. The same determination they have to make a profit. We have the same determination to tell them, no, you can't sell drugs here. And we stand out there 24 hours a day and let the dealers know and let those who will come to buy drugs that you can't buy drugs in this neighborhood. How are you stopping them? How are they not killing you? The police get killed, I mean, just uh, in the last couple of weeks. Three policemen killed because of drug deals. I think the very fact is that we standing out there as a deterrent, and I'm not saying that we cannot die. We can die, but they can die too. If we're talking about a war on drugs, how come only, only the good people are dying? I'm saying that there's room for all of us to die. And we're not going out there except to protect ourselves, and I think that it would be a deterrent if all the people in all of the communities would stand up and say, no, you're not going to sell drugs in this neighborhood, I think we can stop it. Are the police helping you in your neighborhood? Yes, they are. How, how, how great a force are the police in that neighborhood, or frankly, are they scared to death too? I think that the entire nation is, is afraid, and I think that what's happening in the police uh, department is indicative of what's happening in the nation. However, in the 79th precinct in our locality, Bethel Stuyvesant, they're making a very, very good effort and uh, there is uh, the police presence there to some degree. And I'm saying that 30,000 law enforcement agents in this city is not enough. The people themselves have to work together jointly with well, the police department. In other words, what you are saying is let's not bulk up the police department. Let's the people get together and start doing this and helping the police in that way. Exactly. Like the like the Curtis Slee was of this country, exactly. like the Imams of this country, all right? And like, We're saying, like this, this brother here, Riaz Hussein, here's a man who is a new kind of politician. He's running for office in the 11th Congressional District in Brooklyn. This man is one of the insp inspirators, inspirers, to help us, to motivate us to fight against the drugs. And I think we need new politicians like him to help us to fight against these drugs. Yeah, let, me go, yeah. let, let, me go, let me go to John Flynn. John, let me go to you. Okay. Correct, correct, me, correct me, John, if I'm wrong now. Okay. Your argument goes something like this. We should legalize drugs so that selling them won't be a crime. Should we legalize murder, rape, and killing someone so that won't be a crime? No, you're going to stop murder. You're going to stop murder when you legalize drugs. Boy, boy. <laughs> you have 387 you kids. 387, he asked me the question, excuse me. 387 kids died in L.A. What, in the last six months? Drug turf wars. They happened to be blacks and Hispanics, so nobody noticed. 
Nobody noticed. Those kids won't die. It's what, a big what, life what about all the babies that are born addicted right. because their mothers or right. fathers are stop drug that. users? Stop what do you mean that. stop that? If you legalize you it, they're not going to be addicted. Then you have some control when you, you legalize it. Do you have the right to condemn yeah. a young child to an addiction of crack or heroin or another of substance? Of course not. Because you want to legalize it. How the hell, stop it, stop How the hell John? Do you stop it when you say legalize it? Yeah. Because then you can use the billion dollars instead right. of giving it to the military. You educate people and give oh, them all. That is so much baloney. That is so much baloney. And you have them stand outside heard, the school. I've heard you sociological you engineers stop it for years getting into the school. About education. You stop it from You're going to the mothers. The you stop it from going to the kids. You screwed it up because there's no education. You're in that corner. Just a second. Stand by. We'll be right back. Tell you what. I believe. I believe that. American people inherently ex uh, respect people who they know are trying to help them, who they know aren't filling their own pocketbooks. You take Curtis Sliwa and his guardian angels, all right? Yes, they've had deaths. Yes, they've had injuries, all right? Indeed, they would have had many more in the combatant areas in which you guys are always found, all right? As the Iman and his people who are working so hard to prevent drug uh, proliferation of their neighborhoods, which is already there. Joe, earlier you mentioned in the last segment something about regarding alcohol. There was something going between you and uh, Flynn. Yes, he said something before that I want to address, and before I do, for the individual behind me who very glibly said that cops are shooting themselves. In this instance, it's right. It's a very sad thing, and I have nothing but, but hate, or not hate, but sorrow for a person that is that idiot. He's an Amadon, and the Irish, that means an educated idiot. It's probably what he is. I, didn't As far, I know you didn't say that. It was behind me. It was one of these compassionate non-fighters for their country that I've been hearing of. In the meantime, in the meantime, you Shut said the kids face. aren't. You said the kids aren't. You said the kids aren't drinking alcohol. That's seven. The av you're you're full of baloney, John. The average age of the beginning drinker. The average age of the beginning drinker in the state of New Jersey right now is 11 and a half years old. That's the average age of the beginning drinker. We're putting kids in for, for alcohol detox, for God's sakes, at six years old. Let's at seven it. years old. Let's stop it. We're trying to stop it. How are you going to stop but it? But one way you're, you're not, you're never going to stop it is to make it oh, legal really? for kids. You're not when we made it legal for them at 18, they killed themselves it? in bunches. Why aren't you, you going to be able to stop it? You cannot legalize drugs. Let me tell you something. 24 years in, in drugs alone, my friend, you don't know your backside from your front side when it comes to drugs. Yeah. It's a shame you're able to make it up. You want to hear my experiences? You, you want to hear my experiences? They go back beyond yours, buddy. And that goes for that alleged Christmas tree alongside you. Yeah. Let me tell you what. Listen, you General, 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 yeah, General, General, General George, put Mr. your Mr. men Mr. around the schools. Don't Let put them on the body. Let me tell you Put them around the school. Let me tell you something. Then you'll be when doing you bury something. a nephew the way I did from an overdose of heroin, you can talk about it. When yeah. you put the time on the street that I did, you yeah. can talk about it. Yeah. Right now, you ought to feel sorry for yourself, because I, I sure I feel sorry it. for you if you want to put soldiers around the border. That's You're exactly what I want to do, all yeah. right? You I don't want to steal the borders. I want to put enough men up there to help Iman, all Absolutely. right? To help him yeah. and right. to put a mile radius around any school. Around the school. Men to keep those junk dealers out of there, Absolutely. all right? That's the way to help. Absolutely. Here's, a, here's a gentleman, Dana Beard. You've been sitting in the audience listening Dana to Beale. crap. Well, uh, basically, I'm here because we're doing a parade. I know that we weren't supposed to, uh, to talk about this. You're but doing a parade? We're for legal marijuana and against hard drugs. And I want to ask this man over here, if the only way to stop hard drugs was to concentrate enforcement, to take it off of marijuana and put, on, put it on crack, would you be willing to do that? Marijuana is a drug. Marijuana kills. Marijuana oh, addicts. Oh. And let me tell you something else about marijuana. I went through the marijuana hey, pal, wars. Let me tell you something, pal. You open your mouth like that again, I'll yank your beard off. Yeah. Mort, I hear him talking about marijuana, the herb. Years ago, they used to get out in front of us and throw little balls of excrement at us. And he used to scream, marijuana's a plant. Mar God, wouldn't, God gave us plants. He wouldn't give us anything bad for it. Why don't you smoke roses or orchids, for God's sake? 
You know why? Because well, you wouldn't get high. I know high. one thing. Because you wouldn't get high. Tobacco is radioactive, and marijuana is I not. I don't use tobacco, my friend. Well, he, he smokes it like but a... You that's his bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you, you one thing. It because it's a big Would you rather have the, the streets be full... You've got a reason. choice right now. Would you have the streets be full of crack or full of pot? I don't want the streets full of anything. You're not going to get me into something like that. Well, I don't want to pull anything. I know. I under know you're full of under Reagan, under Reagan, we've decriminalized cocaine by recriminalizing marijuana and stuffing the prisons with marijuana people. My well, heart bleeds. Well, well, I went down. Curtis, Curtis, jump in here. I, I heard these arguments in the 60s. They're just on the corner smoking their herb, their buds. They're not going to bother anybody. But all of a sudden, along came dust, amphetamines, coolinol. They had to add to their wardrobe of options. Hey, you know, the other businessman's going to put me out of business. The, the, same guy selling, the, the same guy selling reefer now is selling crack. And anybody in the inner city will tell you that. It's an entree to these other drugs. Just look at this guy here and him as an example of why not to smoke pot. Look at yourself. Oh, look at yourself right in the mirror. Yeah, Curtis, the bug in the eye. Curtis, all I can say, Curtis, all I can say is that, Curtis, all I can say is that the, the CIA and the Contras probably spoke to him. He got that at his last cabinet meeting when they called him in because they had a talk to him. Oh, no, no, it's John Kerry, John what? Kerry and the U.S. What? Senate. Let's, hear, let's hear what double all. O Senate. has to say. Yeah. Are you serious? What about the fact that you are trying to suppress a Good natural time. human, a natural human all drive three of them. similar to the sex drive, okay? Children, innocent children, when they're young, they spin themselves around and they lay down on the floor. Why? Because they want to alter their consciousness. They don't know that, that this is because of taking drugs. This is a natural human drive. People don't want to be high all the time. They want to be able to alter their consciousness because this country, we are more in danger of being killed by our fellow Americans than by the Russians because of the war on drugs. Maybe. Maybe he ought to go to Russia. It's safer there for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I want to see the country. I want to walk the time. I want Dana, zip it for a minute. Now start. Go ahead, okay. Pat. There's 30 million potheads. Only about 5 million crackheads, junkies, and everything. How are we ever going to deal with that if you have to take, I mean, just 1% of the potheads as something like one-third of the total jail population in the United States? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I suggest everyone who wants decriminalized pot move to California, baby. You can carry an ounce it's of the whistle. It's decriminalized oh, fine. in New York. Uh, well, but fine. You got your you got your ounce. Go go backstage, light one up, have a ball. All right. I'm trying to get time. a decrim here in New Jersey. You're trying to get it done here in New Jersey. Here and light one up. Keep it away from me. Be very careful, my friend. Uh, again, again. Let us let us let us be students of history. We went through the '60s. We saw all these trendoids in movies playing guitars. Guys like Boy George, are they male, female, or frozen vegetable? <laughs> and they're using drugs, right? And they're literally talking about that kind of lifestyle. Unfortunately, they live in the bizarre, tutti fruity world, not the real world. Our children are dying from it. Our children are being wasted from it. And we allow guys like this, purveyors of death, to come before our young children and talk about it's not all that nasty. It won't lead to other drugs. I suggest we go to Phoenix House. I suggest we go to those clinics that are fighting against drugs and all those heroin oh, users. So can you to say, oh, you, you sit there and say, come on, you don't know what let's the hell you're look, talking about, John. Let's look at history. Let's look at history. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. We'll be back in a minute. I want to talk to them. There are some answers. Why the hell don't you come up with them? Tell you just by just by going into this audience during our segment break, there's still plenty of fight left in this audience and probably some good thoughts. I want to start with this gentleman. Please introduce your first name and whatever you have on your mind. I'm Carlos Cortez. I'm the president of WESAC, West Side Against Crack. I live in Manhattan. I live in North Chelsea. And uh, the organization was formed strictly and mostly to fight drugs, crack, crime the Upper West Side. What have you accomplished? 
What we've done is organize the neighborhood, organize the community, brought in the guardian angels, and cleaned it up. How have you cleaned it up? Uh, are you sure that you've gotten rid of the crack dealers? Are you sure? Have the police told you the numbers? That they no, we have not. We have you not got yours cleaned with up them? the neighborhood. <laughs> that looks about the size of your bladder. No more. We haven't cleaned up the neighborhood. It's a continuous fight. We've been in business for six months, and in those six months, the turnaround has been close to 100%. I've lived in the neighborhood for five years, and I was told that for the past 18 years, nothing could be done. Up and down 8th Avenue, between 23rd Street and the post office, oozing with crime, oozing with dealers, oozing with crack, with all sorts of forms of this degenerate business. You that couldn't be cleaned. All right. We cleaned it. All right. How about you, sir? Well, I think that we need law and order to deal with drugs. Well, and no, we should you, start. aren't you from WBAI? Yes, and I think right. we should start, my name is Paul, we should start with going after the people who are bringing it in. And Senator John Kerry's committee in the Senate had the Contras from Nicaragua pointing at each other, blaming each other for it. We have uh, John Hull in Costa Rica, an American CIA agent who has the airstrip, and we know for a fact that the CIA, in the, the planes that went down with the guns, came up loaded with co uh, cocaine to the amount of one ton a week for years. And that's how they pay that for the Contra war illegally. The, the people who the crimes are in the highest levels of the government. How come Reagan, Meese, and Bush aren't going to jail? Bush was head of the South Co Florida Task Force in Miami that was supposed to be dealing with drugs. Who Yet we have witnesses who saw custom agents unloading cocaine off of planes and loading guns on for the Contras. It's a fact. And as far as Curtis, Curtis, I'd like to know why on the Lower East Side you worked with Emil Braun, Angels in Dirty Places, Emil Braun who uses uh, crackheads to go into his buildings and force people out so he can raise the rent to $1,500 a month. It's Don't a common answer, plan. Curtis. And you, and you, and Cur you and Curtis, I'm let Curtis respond. Guys, guys like you, you would love the Lower East Side to remain the drug it, center man. of Manhattan. You'd love that, right? Well, why don't you work for Braun? Because we'll Braun. work with any man, woman, and child that's even ready to roll up their sleeves. Even if he's a crack dealer? Don't, don't give me this crack dealer well, business. You, Look at yourself. Are you a dopehead? You smoke dope? Do you smoke dope? Answer the You're question. You're telling me that landlords you don't like, push you like crack? You like Do landlords Reagan push crack and, and put crackheads into apartments to get rid of people? You're telling me that doesn't Somebody, happen in New York City? I've buried four people in the battle against drugs you to put question? guys like you out of business. Why do you work you for landlords? You point fingers at the government? Why do, you, why do you work for the landlords? Why do you support George Bush, the guy who was in charge of the Miami? What do you mean support Miami? George Bush? Your, let me tell you something. Jesse George Jackson, Bush right? The Jesse the Jackson, the great liberal, said mandatory drug testing. But George why? Bush was in a position but to why? do something. What did no, he do? No, he yeah, because he's in the inner Bush city. George didn't do he anything. Deals with he let it come in. He was getting killed. George Bush Not knew it was coming in. intellectual trash George like you. You don't know about the inner city. George Bush knew it. Enough of your crap. Hey. Go ahead. Here's your drug rally. Here's your drug rally. Is that the answer, smoking a joint? I'd like to ask the people on the panel, besides Curtis, you got any kids? Yes. Do you? Yeah. Three teenage daughters. Yeah? yeah. What are they, smoking dope? No, they're smoking cigarettes, unfortunately. One of them has admitted to me she, that was all right, let me before just, she was 13. Let me have my say now, all right? Because I was biting my tongue back there with all your fil filthy garbage, all right? I started, I started using drugs when I was 13 years old, all right? When I'm 20, 29 years old, I stopped, all right? I started with smoking pot. You didn't start with cigarettes and then to booze well, and then to... Well, the issue here is drugs, all right? I oh, know where it tobacco gets and alcohol hell, are not drugs, hell, right? The only where the only place it's going to get you is jail, institutions, and death. That's because of the law. That's because they're illegal. That's because of the law. Because they're illegal. The barbaric laws of America in 1988. Sure. What happened to you? What happened to you? What did it do to your life? All right, I wound up going to Betty Ford because I thought they had the quick answers. But where I got the real help was Phoenix House. All right, going through long-term treatment. All right, and I know where it gets you, and it's no fun. You know, instead of fighting up here, maybe you should be trying to help each other. That's right. That's what I we're don't doing. advocate the use Helping of drugs. I full have freedom full of. Full if your answer is lay back and smoke a joint, 
destroyed. And they're not going to destroy not anyone else in the process. Not at all. Let them be destroyed. Jets, can you answer how the smoke no, out? No. We don't want children to smoke. We don't want children to take crack. You are, we don't want, we don't kids want to children. Take heroin. We don't want children. Concentrate Wait, on that. You, you, Adults in this country can do what the hell they want. Look, you can't stop them. We don't then want. I can Wait, murder you what? with a joke no, over smoke. Because that's what, what I want. Like like we don't want children to drink either. I'm from Stanford, Connecticut, and I'm the uh, founder of an organization called the Kick Foundation, which stands for Keep It Clean Kids. And I just can't believe the ignorance of some of these statements. I mean, like Curtis, not, not quite to the extent that you guys, and God bless you for what you're doing, but I've been out on the streets. We uh, wrote a song, and, you know, what you see on the streets is unbelievable. I can't believe what you guys are saying. Have you been out in any ghettos? Have you walked the streets? You know, uh, we wrote a song called Kick the Crack, which we distributed about two, 3,000 copies through the school system, and uh, it's helping kids out. You know, it's a good message. I just can't believe what I'm hearing. I'm not going to give up. You're not going to stop I'm not going to give up. I'm not either. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to give up. I don't want you to give up. up because he probably has a secret agenda of his own, ma'am. No, I'm not a politician like you. <laughs> I'd just like to say, I mean, if you have kids, right? Yeah. I've, I've grown up, and I'm like 18 only. I've grown up to know that it's wrong and it's legal. And I've been hurt by my parents, teachers, everyone. How are you going to make it better by, by saying that it's okay and saying, well, not it's okay, but when you're this age, you can do it. What, I mean, already I have so many people that I know. I'm not going to say they're my friends, but I know so many people who, who drink, and they do do drugs, and it is, they drink, and then they, they have drugs and everything. But that's because, you know, I mean, drinking is accepted, at, at least. If people, do, I mean, I can see people drink, and I say, okay, they can drink. But then if I see them take drugs, I say, that's illegal. You're going to get in really big, big trouble. You think people are going to, little kids are going to grow up and say, since it's legal, I can do it now. I don't know if you can understand what I'm saying. No, but I understand what you're saying, if you're really. Little, and I you don't think that's what's going to happen. Okay, I, mean, I don't think that's what's going to happen. You concentrate on the right kids. Concentrate. I don't drink. What do you mean I can't stop drinking? Oh, you mean in general you can't stop it? All right, we'll be back. We'll be right back to come to our audience again. Stand by. time that we have remaining, I want to hear from some of these folks. Go ahead, pal. My name is Joseph McBratney, and I'd like to speak to these two very ignorant men right here. I think they're very ignorant. Yeah. No, I'm not looking through you. I'm looking right at you. Okay, I want to know if the, either one of you knows what it's like to be addicted to a controlled substance. Have you ever seen anything like a, a Narcotics Anonymous meeting where people spill their guts on being addicted because they want to help themselves? And you want to legalize it, and these people are never going to be able to break that addiction. Because I went to Berkeley legalize before you were born. You're you went to where? You Berkeley. Are very you Berkeley. I don't care Berkeley. where you went. That explains a lot of your problems. Let me tell you what it explains. Have you ever been to an AA meeting? Oh, plenty of them. People alcohols. I'm, I'm not an alcoholic, okay? but I go to So why make it worse and add this I liquor? Right. With the liquor, why add drugs to it? Mm. Why? Because you can't stop it. You idiot, you can't stop it. Don't call him an idiot. He's the worst person you ever thought of. You're an idiot. Let me talk to that gentleman behind you. Go ahead, sir. Stab up there. All right. I'm poor. I'm Puerto Rican. I live on the Lower East Side. I've been detoxed twice for addiction to hard drugs. I'm for legalizing everything. I'm for legalizing everything because what got me away from hard drugs was getting involved with some good hippies who were doing some other shit. Who told, who, told, who told me that you are a cool person, you're a decent person, but you can't be part of our scene. Well, I want to tell you one thing. I want to tell you one thing. I want to tell you one thing. The student loan you got to go to the beauty shop didn't work. <laughs> Why do you want to legalize the drugs so you won't get caught anymore? He's talking. Why do you want to legalize the drugs now? So you won't get arrested anymore? Exactly. So that people who are 18, 19 years old won't go to jail before they have a chance to involve themselves in some other thing. You want to put guys in jail for 20 years in the 90s. 
I want to put them in for life if they sell it. For life. If we follow, if we follow their line of logic, two people in the public square publicly fornicating. Hey, they're not hurting anybody, right? Let's let them do it. We don't let them do it in America, and we're not going to let our kids become prisoners of drugs. Your people got killed because drugs are illegal. That's why they got killed. I'm not for letting Think people do it in my living room. I'm not for people letting letting people do it in my building. I'm for getting my people, uh, my friends together and say, hey, it might, you can do it. You got a right to do it. You don't have a right to do it in my living room, in my building, or in my neighborhood. It ain't working, folks, but I'll tell you something that's working. Out here, out in America, we've got to get together. We've got to forget about depending only on the police, about depending on the government, all right? It hasn't worked so far, all right? We are the government. When the hell are we going to realize it and do something about it?